Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Previously, we talked about the history of the 30 carbine cartridge and how it developed over the course of time as a military and then as a sporting cartridge. As I promised, what I'd like to do today is not only talk about its stopping power in our normal FBI setup, but as well as how the cartridge does at some longer ranges. As I mentioned, there's a lot of information out there to suggest that it's just not very powerful. And I'm trying to get to the bottom of those mathematics because right now that's a bit of a mystery to me. Now, I understand that most of the time you wouldn't be testing a carbine or intermediate cartridge at 10 feet. But what I'm trying to do is give everybody a little bit of a comparison to say maybe our more powerful handgun cartridges we've done like 357, 10, or 357 SIG to see what happens with the gel and the types of energy that you can generate. And right now I'm curious to see how it's going to do. I've got a couple of different types of ammo to use and we'll talk about what that is later. So let's get to the range. So to continue with today's demonstration, I have two different types of ammunition, both of it weighing 110 grain, which was the military spec. So the full metal jacket is from Wolf Performance Ammunition, 110 grain steel case full metal jacket. The next one is from Winchester, also 110 grain hollow soft point. And this looks like maybe MacArthur might have issued this back in Korea. Old looking box. Might see some interesting results in the ballistic gelatin with the hollow point, but that remains to be seen. So what I'm gonna do is get the old M1 charged up here. Now I do apologize for the bag, but it will help get us at a flatter angle. And I'm also going to try, of course, to call out the speed as we go through the shooting. Definitely a mil spec trigger for sure. Alrighty, here we go. Put the weapon on safe. See what we got. Ah. Looks like it might have kind of kicked out here. You can see a little bit of a crack. Serious cavitation though, which is exactly what you would expect from around moving out at around 2,000 feet per second. It's definitely gonna create a channel. I'm gonna to try to get another one because we had an error message with the chronograph. Hopefully we can get it to read this time. I'm gonna go slightly to the right. That was 1921 feet per second. And I pushed that one right down the middle. So you can see I'm on the other side of the gel this time from where we were. Once again, major cavitation, 1921 feet per second is awfully fast and it did exit both blocks. So this should be our last Full metal jacket round. Go slightly right again. So I cheated the shot over to the right and from this side of the table you can tell major, major cavitation which would absolutely tell you what even in full metal jacket variety and we clip the corner here. So we're not hearing any steel clinks because I'm a little bit over the steel, I believe, but either way, tremendous amount of power. I'm gonna check the chronograph. Ah, sorry about that, another error message. I think we can safely conclude it would be around 1900 or so. And now we're going to switch to the hollow point from Winchester. Staying a bit low. And on the left. Ah, much more furious reaction from the block. So, of course, we entered lower and on the left side of the block as you face it, and right at around 14 and a half, 15 inches or so, you have a mangled up actual projectile. It looks like the copper stayed on it as well. So, that's definitely a bad day. 
especially when you consider that the round is traveling at 2,016 feet per second. I've already done the math. 2,000 feet per second at 110 grains would give you right around 1,000 foot-pounds of energy, so a substantial impact. Now we're going to go right down the middle with another... Also another violent reaction. Weapons on safe. So it's a little bit difficult to tell right now, but to my eye, it looks like that the second round, I'm going to try to move it, might be towards the end of the block. Easily more powerful than a pistol round, and I would say maybe roughly a third less power than 30 out 6 Way good stopper at close range. Let's see what happens to its abilities when we move back to 50 and then 100 yards. As we look down range, I'm set up at about 50 yards and I have the gel block on top of a stand and I'm going to try to get one in the gel block from here and then go see what sort of accuracy we have as well as how much stopping power the rifle has at the 50 yard mark. Definitely a mil spec trigger. Okay, there's one hit. Let's try another one. Definitely a hit because I think it lifted the gel block. So, what an absolutely special treat with no tricks on our part. I fired two rounds. It looks like one hit here and bounced there in between the two blocks. This is all undisturbed and you can see, still hot, warm, and wow, I gotta tell you at 50 yards, I wouldn't wanna get hit by that thing. So we're gonna move back to 100 and see how things go. The weapon system, if you guys are not familiar, has almost no recoil. Yeah, it's got a bit of a clunky military trigger, but that aperture sighting system is fantastic. And I gotta tell you, it's fun gun to shoot. And right now, looks like it's got plenty of power at 50 yards. Let's move back, see what happens. So I've moved back to the 100 yard line. I have a target board behind the gel block so we can kind of see where the impact is after the gel if it does get through the gel block. All that being said, not really sure about the windage and elevation on the M1 carbine. I haven't touched anything as it was borrowed from Buffalo Trading. So I'm going to put some ears on and see how it goes with the Wolf ammo. And hopefully we'll get a good result here. Took a while to figure out where exactly to aim the carbine, but you can see two distinct impacts through the gel block. There's two exit holes and then on into the paper. I had been doing some testing prior. I'm actually aiming at the left side of the plywood, maybe eight or nine inches off of the bullseye to actually hit the block because more or less we're just not dialing it in. I mean, you could do that, but it's just a Kentucky winded shot just to see what the stopping power actually is. And I got to tell you, that of course is a full metal jacket projectile, easily penetrates. And I would tell you that at 100 yards, this definitely would have lethal power. So I'm not sure where all of this anecdotal information comes from, that it is not powerful gel block would suggest something else. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video.